Hey, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing if it makes sense to go 100% cash right now, knowing that a recession could be coming very soon. This is a legitimate question that so many investors have been asking themselves lately as we continually see stocks decline further and further from their all time highs. With Q1 2022 GDP recently coming out and an annualized negative 1.4% growth quarter over quarter, it's going to take one more quarter in a row of negative GDP growth until we're officially going to be in a recession. Now I want to be totally Totally honest and upfront here by saying that there is a very real possibility we could be in a recession within the next 12 months. So in today's video, we'll be taking a look back to see how things played out during the 2008 recession to then try and gather some similarities and figure out the best path forward. But before we get into the video, I wanted to share that I just launched my very own Patreon page that I would love for you guys to go check out. If you've been watching my videos for a while now and you've thought about supporting me on the next level, you can now join one of my three Patreon tiers, which ranges from $6 per month for the supporter tier, $10 per month for the investor tier, or $30 per month for the savage tier. You'll be able to gain access to my stock trades, what my stock portfolio looks like, my stock intrinsic value calculator, rental property analysis spreadsheet, and then a discord community of like-minded investors. Or if you just want to ask me some questions or have a one-on-one -on -one coaching call, you can join the top tier as well. And by the way, if you join today, you won't have to pay for the rest of the month, so you'll essentially get all of May for free. So if my Patreon does interest you at all, make sure to check out the link in the description or the pinned comment below to join. Anyways, thank you so much guys, I really appreciate you, and now let's get straight into the video. Alright, so let's start by taking a look at our most recent US GDP report. Here we can see real GDP fell by 1.4% annualized in Q1 2022, being the first negative GDP quarter over quarter growth since the COVID pandemic back in early 2020. In fact, this Q1 2022 number is down from growing 6.9% annualized in Q4 2021, so that is a massive shift from huge growth to shrinkage in only a matter of six months. And if you weren't aware, basically the GDP is the market value of all the finished goods and services within a specific country. So that means the value of finished goods and services dropped this past quarter in the US. Keep in mind too, we received this Q1 2022 GDP report at the end of April. So we didn't even know all of this was happening until about two months later. So what's next? Do we think this trend is going to continue into a full-blown recession? Well, at this point, the real answer is nobody knows. And based on how variable the GDP numbers have been over the past year, it could be that we see an increase again next quarter, but it's not a guarantee. Now, in terms of how the stock market has been doing over the same period, we can see that back in January, stocks began falling well before we even got this Q1 2022 GDP data. Nowadays, we're sitting almost 25% off all-time highs in the NASDAQ index and only about 13% down on the S&P 500 before we even know of potentially being in a recession. So clearly, the stock market is more of a leading indicator when it comes to a potential recession on the horizon versus GDP data being more of a lagging indicator. We still have yet to see if that actually comes true because we don't know if we're in a recession yet. Anyways, let's now take a look at how things played out during the 2008 recession because there are some very interesting things that can apply to how we should be acting today. Okay, so if we start by taking a look at the stock market during the 2008 recession, the S&P 500 peaked at $1,562 per share on the week of October 8th, 2007. But surprisingly, it wasn't until late April April of 2008 that we finally received Q1 2008 GDP numbers showing negative GDP growth quarter over quarter. This was the first true indication of a potential recession being on the horizon other than the fact that the yield curve may have inverted, but the stock market had already been down from all time highs for about seven months by May of 2008. Anyways, moving along, we can see that US GDP actually recovered and continued growing for the next two quarters in a row as if there wasn't any potential recession on the horizon to be worried about. But even as the US GDP GDP continued rising for these next two quarters, the S&P 500 still wasn't making any new highs. Then by the time the last positive GDP report came out at the end of November in 2008, for Q3 of 2008, the S&P 500 was trading below $900 per share, which was down 42% from its highs. Keep in mind, at this point, GDP data was still technically positive, yet the S&P 500 was down over 40% from its highs. So people didn't even technically know they were in a recession yet. By the way, I do just want to show this chart from the balance where they have sources saying GDP growth for Q3 2008 was negative 0.5% in the final estimate, but that's not what I gathered from the Fred economic data, which is arguably more accurate. So I thought I'd just mention that for completeness. Anyways, what you need to know is that the stock market peaked over one year before the recession actually began in Q4 of 2008, where GDP data finally turned negative once again, which was actually released in late February of 2009. Now at this point, we can see the S&P 500 
500 actually bottomed soon after this report came out during the week of March 2nd, 2009. Then even as the next two GDP reports came out for Q1 and Q2 of 2009, which were significantly worse than the Q4 2008 report, the stock market had already begun its climb upwards again. Then it wasn't until late November of 2009 that the Q3 2009 GDP report was published and indicated that GDP began growing once again. But can you take a guess where the stock market would have been at this point already? Well, by that time, the S&P 500 was back above $1,000 per share again, and anyone that had waited to buy the dip had missed out on some significant gains to be made in earlier months. So basically, the stock market started falling about a year before anyone even knew that they were in a recession. And likewise, the stock market bottomed about nine months before anyone knew that the recession was finally over. Now, here are three key takeaways and lessons learned that I've gathered from this 2008 case study. First of all, in 2008, stocks began falling about a year before the recession actually began, meaning that stocks are a leading indicator and GDP is a lagging indicator. And the first lesson learned is that we shouldn't be relying on GDP data to make our own investment decisions. We should start buying when stocks are low and continue buying as they fall lower because we never know when the bottom's going to happen. Now the second key takeaway that we can gather is that in the 2008 recession, stocks began recovering nine months before GDP did. And the second lesson that we can take away from this is that the stock market is a forward-looking machine. We should be buying when times are bad and not waiting for the good news to happen because by that time, it's already too late to be buying. In fact, the best time to be buying back in 2008 was when that first negative GDP report came out and the stock market had bottomed soon after that. And we could say that that's arguably very similar to the period that we're in right now where we just got a negative GDP report, stocks are down from their all-time highs by about 25% in the NASDAQ. And so this could be presenting a very good buying opportunity even though things could potentially get worse from here. And that leads me into my third key takeaway where in Q1 2022, this was the first negative GDP report since the pandemic recession. So the third lesson learned here is that we should be greedy when others are fearful. We can even see in Warren Buffett's most recent quarterly report with Berkshire Hathaway that they bought over $40 billion worth of stocks in this past quarter. So if Warren Buffett is deploying a lot of his cash right now and some of the economic data shows that it could be a very good time to be buying, I am going to be deploying my money into stocks while others are fearful. Anyways, getting back to the question at the beginning of this video, should we be selling all of our stocks and going 100% into cash right now? Well, I personally think that that's a really bad idea based on all of the data that we've just looked at. And I could be completely wrong in the short term, the stock market could fall another 50% from where it is today. But as long-term investors, we should not be focusing on selling our stocks. We should be focusing on when we can buy them at a discount. But yeah, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that right now could be a good opportunity to buy? Do you think there's more pain ahead? I would love to hear it in the comments below. So yeah, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you have not already. And also feel free to join my Patreon in the link below if you do feel so. And with that said, I will see you guys in the next one.